So it's Roundup herbicide that's specially formulated for big jobs. That's the new one. Oh, and this one, it says biodegradable. That's the old one. It doesn't say biodegradable anymore, so it must no longer be biodegradable. It's the same product. I imagine they don't have the right to say it anymore. It must not really be biodegradable. Be careful not to spray it in my face. Oh, I'm not a murderer. Well, I'm sure these Roundup Ready soybeans are ready to harvest today. They're probably about... I'm going to say about 11.5% moisture, so they're perfect for harvest. First heard about Roundup Ready soybeans in a farm magazine about eight years ago, and uh, it seemed like a neat in innovation. The soybean has a protein genetically inserted into the plant, and it's resistance of Roundup. The Roundup is sprayed on the plants. There are some definite advantages. If you look at our, my field here, you don't see weeds. When label directions are carefully followed, Roundup is not harmful to humans, animals, or their environment. Copyright Monsanto, made in Belgium. If you see any snails, don't spray them because they'll be inedible. So watch the strawberries. I'd encourage European farmers to take a look at the Roundup Ready technology. Frankly, it's very good for the environment. It's a sustainable system. So give it a try. Monsanto. For 20 years I've traveled the globe and everywhere I've heard about this American multinational. But what I've heard hasn't always been positive. Wanting to know more, I surfed the web for months to put the pieces of the puzzle together. On its website, Monsanto positions itself as an agricultural company that aims to help farmers produce healthier food while reducing agriculture's impact on our environment. Its leading product is Roundup, the world's best-selling herbicide for the last 30 years. One shot. All it takes for weeds. Roundup. Monsanto is also the world leader in biotechnology. 90% of the GMOs grown on the planet belong to them. Most of them have been genetically modified to resist the application of Roundup, like Roundup-ready soybeans. Monsanto's GMOs have invaded the planet. But no ag industry product in history has ever incited as much controversy and passion. Why? What's at stake with GMOs? And could the company's past shed some light on what the company is or claims to be today? Founded in St. Louis, Missouri in 1901, it was not always an agricultural company. It was one of the largest chemical companies of the 20th century. Chemistry is working for you, and very likely Monsanto is working for you. Monsanto, where creative chemistry works wonders for you. The wonders boasted about in this commercial made Monsanto one of the most controversial companies in the industrial era. Agent Orange, Aspartame, 
bovine growth hormone, PCBs. These chemically created oils used worldwide as coolants and lubricants in electrical equipment were the jewels in Monsanto's crown for over 50 years. They were called Araclor in the United States, Pyrilin in France, and Clofen in Germany, until they were banned in the early 1980s. Monsanto PCB. A Washington Post article from 2002. Monsanto hid decades of pollution. It happened in Anniston, Alabama. Terry was my baby brother. Um, he died in 1971. Uh, from a cancer of the brains, or a tumor of the brains, cancer of the lungs, and hurts of the heart. He was 16. In the last three years, I have lost more friends. Uh, they died from illnesses, cancer, um, sugar diabetes, hepatitis, all these different ailments that comes with PCBs, and they have been related to PCB. This is Monsanto Road. This is all just a black area of uh, minorities that live in this area. But every one of these homes was, like, contaminated. They just cleaned that yard up over there to the right about six months ago. These was all homes. These people lived here, and they now, they had to move. They, I mean, the houses was torn down. My brother fell dead right around the house. This is the house I was raised in. See this grass right here, they buried PCBs over here. Monsanto got permission to bury PCBs in Anniston. And uh, this is Snow Creek right here, where they put the cement in here. It comes from the plant discharging to PCBs all the way down through here. And it was poisoning. Uh, they never told anybody, but they told the state. The state didn't tell us. PCB Monsanto knew, but what exactly did they know? An environmental organization in Washington, D.C., headed by Ken Cook, has put internal Monsanto files online. Most of them are classified confidential. FYI and destroy. In 1937, exposure to PCBs provokes systemic toxic effects and acne forms skin eruption. In 1961, two workers developed hepatitis symptoms after a pipe broke in a factory using PCBs. In 1966, Monsanto scientists placed fish in Snow Creek's water. All were dead in three and a half minutes. Pollution, a letter addressed to sales executives in 1970. This is the one that really tells you the story. They're saying, we can't afford to lose one dollar of business. Their neighbors in Anniston were not told about the, the poisoning that they were inflicting upon them because they didn't want to lose one dollar. It was only when lawyers went to court on behalf of people in Anniston and forced the company through the legal system to disclose these internal secret documents that we knew what they knew. They knew the truth from the very beginning. They lied about it. They hid the truth from their neighbors. They hid the truth, in many cases, from the government authorities. And when they did share information with government authorities that should have been acted upon, the government of authorities, instead of siding with the people who were being poisoned, sided with the company. They sided with Monsanto. It was outrageous, absolutely unforgivable. <laughs> oh, these are all your medicines? Yeah. yeah. Well, no, they ain't all of them. I, I got know. some more here. <laughs> 
How much you have in you? 63.8. In the blood. In the blood. If they took a fatty biopsy of him now, he probably would top the scales of about three or 4,000 parts per billion or more. And which is the level acceptable? I mean... Acceptable is two, point, part, uh, two parts per billion. That's standard all around the world. But these people, we have more in our bloods and in our body than actually anywhere else in the world. Uh -huh. It's usual here to speak about his PCB point. level. We all talks about it because it became a household word now. Kids used to run up to me, Mr. Baker, I, I got tested. I had three point part per billion in my blood. Uh, how, how long do you think I got? But that's a horrible story. But what do scientists think about it? On the web, you can find numerous articles concerning the effects of PCBs on human health. David Carpenter is one of the most qualified specialists in the field. He carried out the testing for the Aniston residents. We all have PCBs in our bodies. The polar bears and the penguins have PCBs. And what has happened is in the past, there were a few sites where PCBs were released, but over time, they've gone into the air, they've gone into the water, they've transported, so the whole world is now contaminated with PCBs. The issue is that many diseases are caused by PCB exposure. The one everyone knows about is cancer. My test results say that I had 202, 202 parts per billion in my system. Women that get pregnant and have PCBs in their body will have a child with a reduced IQ. 29.6. PCBs cause reduced thyroid function. Oh, 1,800. PCBs interfere with sex hormones. I swear, just let me pass away. Pass away in peace. He's gonna pay, I said then. He's gonna pay for the way that he has done to us. In 2001, 20,000 Aniston residents filed two lawsuits against Monsanto. Monsanto and its subsidiary, Solutia, settled by paying $700 million to compensate the victims, to clean up the site, and to build a specialized hospital. But no Monsanto executive was ever sued. To do justice. Under American law, in most instances, it's very rare for executives or uh, officials in these companies to be held criminally responsible. So we have the civil system, the civil courts. We make them pay. And the truth of the matter is, in most instances, uh, the price these companies pay decades later is a fraction of their profits. And this is why it pays to keep these problems secret. And it makes you wonder what they might be keeping secret now. Uh, I have to say, we would never trust a company like Monsanto to tell the truth about a pollution problem or about a product. We would never trust them. Ken Cook says we would never trust a company like Monsanto. So what about Roundup, the world's favorite herbicide used by gardeners and farmers alike? What is it exactly? It's the brand name Monsanto gave to glyphosate, a so-called non-selective or total herbicide because it destroys all plants. First sold in 1974, it owes its great success to Monsanto's unwavering claims that it is biodegradable and good for the environment. Voici Roundup, le premier des herbants biodégradables. Il détruit les mauvaises herbes de l'intérieur jusqu'aux racines et ne pollue ni la terre ni l'os de Rex. Roundup, le désherbant qui donne envie de désherber. Roundup biodegradable. Ken Cook was right. The company was found guilty of false advertising, twice. The first time was in New York in 1996. And the second was in France just last year. The judges found that the wording biodegradable leaves the soil clean and respects the environment for false advertising. 